gentlemen welcome back everybody um, and if you're new welcome um, today we're gonna make a video called how to convert a tube console amp for hi-fi stereo use then this is gonna be a fun one okay how many of you remember growing up and uh, having one of these maybe in your living room um, you know you still see them today maybe there's one at grandma's house over in the corner or maybe uh, your aunt and uncle have one down in the basement their basement you've seen um, you know, I still run into these things at thrift stores all the time. I mean, I see them pretty much every weekend when I'm out thrift store hunting. And um, a lot of them are, um, you know, more modern. If you look, if you go in, the first thing I always do is I look for the tuner. I lift the lid on these things. And somewhere around the radio, the AM, FM section of one of these, they'll usually have lettering that'll say solid state. If it doesn't say that, then you might have one, you might have found one that has a tube uh, amplifier inside of it. And so usually I'll spin around to the back then and I'll start looking for either maybe a little schematic on the back or a model number. If I find one there, then I'll uh, Google it, the Google the model number, and uh, you know try to find a schematic or determine if the thing is tube-based or not. But if it is, you may have just picked up a gem, because I see these things for anywhere from 25 to 50. And you're starting to see them get a little more expensive on Craigslist, but if you find them at the thrift stores, they're still pretty darn cheap. Um, there used to be a gazillion of them out there. They're getting a little harder to find these days because so many people have done what this video is uh, here to talk about today. All right, and these are just some of the more popular brands. Uh, there are others, trust me. Um, but you see a lot of, uh, you know, older uh, Magnavox, uh, Motorola's, uh, Fisher, Pilot, Packard Bell, Curtis Mathis, Silvertone, Zenith, Voice of Music, RCA's and others um, that are out there today, um, console units that all have really nice good tube gear inside of them. So don't overlook these things as a good source of a, a nice hi-fi amplifier. And hidden away inside of those uh, console units, these are what you kind of find. You know, I see them all. Up here's a voice of music unit. Here's a nice Fisher SA-16. Oh, that one's got some 7591 outputs, another Fisher unit, a um, little RCA, a pilot here. Just, you know, you get the idea. A bunch of different little ones. Um, and down here, see this little picture right here? This is a cool little Sears one, and uh, you're going to learn more about that one in today's video. But, um, you know, some of them are mono, um, and hey, that's not a problem. If you can find two of them, you can put them together and make you a stereo amplifier. But... Um, uh, a lot of these units were stereo, and so um, we're going to show you how to, how to go about converting one, regardless of what brand it is. We'll talk. You, we're going to walk you through all the steps today and considerations to take. All right, let's get into a couple things here first. Why did people gut these consoles? You know, first and foremost, they're kind of large and cumbersome, not all that practical in today's times. People move these things around their house, and eventually they can't find a place for them. So they end up out back in a building or down in the basement or, you know, straight to the thrift store. Um, another thing, the speakers inside of them were just kind of so-so, kind of meh. <laughs> they weren't great, um, the speakers inside of these things. So sometimes you can take the amp out of them, hook it up to a, a nice home stereo system that you've built with custom speakers and or uh, you know good brand of speakers and end up with something that sounds much nicer than they ever did in the original console units. Um, many of these units people turned them on now and they just don't work anymore. They get a loud buzz, noise, or hums. Um, you know maybe filter capacitors are gone that bad or these things are blowing fuses or they go to play a record on them and you know that it won't track or um, you know you hear a loud grinding noise in the uh, turntable the idler wheels wore out or whatnot and so you know people aren't willing to invest the money it cost in one of these to get it brought back to life i said i put here people have put them in their basements a lot of them have drawn moisture the veneer is peeling uh, people have poked holes in the uh the nice uh canvas artwork on the front of these things or uh, cloth uh, cloth work on the fronts of them and the last one here, you, this used to be a really true statement. The amps alone were worth more than the entire console unit. I'll give you an example back up here. This little Fisher SA-16 right here, that's about a $400 to $500 amplifier sitting there the way that one is right now. 
Um, and so, you know, you could probably find that console that someone didn't know had that amplifier in it, maybe at a thrift store for $50 and uh, get it home and gut it and uh, have a four or $500 amplifier out of it. Um, but, you know, the one thing I will say, and it's a trend I'm seeing, is um, fully restored console units that someone has taken the time to bring back to life um, properly are starting to fetch a pretty penny. I've seen a couple recently nice Fisher units that have brought over $1,000 for a fully restored unit. So it's one of those things where the uh, the non-gutted units, um, there's not that many left, and uh, somebody put the money in the time to restore one might be worth more than the... Uh, the, the, the hole may be worth more than the pieces in the future. All right, let's talk about the typical steps involved in the conversion once you pulled the amplifier out of the main unit. Um, first and foremost, you're going to want to go out here and see if you can find a schematic. Um, not always can you. Matter of fact, the one I'm going to restore today uh, in this video, I have never um, once seen a schematic for this unit. I've looked and looked. So I'm kind of flying blind, but I thought that would be a good one to do for you guys so that you would understand that even without a schematic, you can kind of break this thing down and understand it and convert it. Second, um, not all these units get their power straight from the wall. Some of these um, feed over and maybe get their power from the, uh, from the tuner or FM section, which then uh, has its power, you know, the power going to the wall. So sometimes you have to add a power cord to these things. Sometimes they don't have a fuse inside of these amplifiers. You certainly want to add one of those. Um, this is an interesting topic here, a power switch. Most of these little units don't have a power switch on them because they were never designed to be operated separately from the whole unit. In other words, the on-off of the volume control, which may be connected over to a completely separate unit than the amplifier, um, is where the on-off switch is, and then it has jumper wires that feed from that unit, almost like an umbilical cord, over to the amplifier. And that's where I mentioned here this jumper blocks. A uh, good, good example on the Magnafox units, they have uh, two wires that come out of a little jumper block that go over into the preamp uh, tuner unit. Um, and those are the wires that if you don't either jumper them together, the unit will never work because uh, it doesn't have a path for the... Um, for the AC to get to it, or two, you would want to use where those um, wires need to be jumpered to insert a power switch there to complete the AC circuit. You're certainly going to have to add input jacks on one of these things, because a lot of these things are just being fed via wires coming from maybe the head end unit, from the tuner, from the receiver, from the turntable, um, but they don't have their own input jacks into the things directly. And I think that's the way to the one we're working on today is as well. A lot of them don't have good speaker output jacks. They'll just have a little terminal strip with a couple of screws on it that you would uh, screw your speaker wires down to. Uh, but most of the time you're going to want to put some nice RCA, uh, I mean uh, banana jacks on the back of these things. Um, up next, um, you typically won't like with any old vintage amplifier, you're going to want to replace the power supply capacitors. You're probably going to want to replace the coupling capacitors. You're going to want to check some of your resistor tolerances, especially um, ones that would uh, operate around the biased, uh, especially the cathode bias resistors, grid resistors, etc. Um, you're going to want to test the tubes, make sure they're good, and maybe replace any of them that are not. You're going to want to kind of take some kind of consideration into, hey, do, do I want to take this metal chassis and sit it straight on top of a nice piece of furniture in my house? So typically you'll want to add some kind of feet to these things or some, uh, some way of mounting it or whatnot. And last and most, uh, or not most important, but uh, most commonly seen, people want to do something to the cosmetics of these things. Maybe put a nice wooden frame around it. Maybe put the logo off the front of the... Uh, the console unit on the front of this thing, just something to spruce it up, make it look, uh, look at not, make it look nice. And last but not least here, um, the less common conversion steps. So sometimes I run into these things, but not all the time. Um, the first one here is the input gain. So I've run into this with some RCA amp amps in the past, and what it is is the first stage of the amplifier. In other words kind of part of the preamp is actually not inside the amplifier chassis. 
it's in another section, maybe in with the tuner or a preamp or um, a different, a completely different chassis inside of the console unit. So then you end up, um, you know, converting just the little amplifier and you find out, wow, this thing doesn't have a lot of gain on the front end to drive this thing with. Thus, my audio output is kind of weak. Um, so you either have to drive those with a preamp um, fairly hard ahead of the first stage or considering, uh, you know, adding another set of tubes uh, in a complete se separate stage, which, which gets into a pretty big engineering effort. Um, and then, um, you know, something else I've had to work with on a few of them, the negative feedback loop. Um, sometimes I've had to play around with those just to get the, uh, kind of get the gain and the, uh, the uh, bandwidth of these things um, opened up properly. Um, sometimes I have seen little units like this that have a third channel in them. Um, sometimes even even more I've seen uh, four or five channels in some uh, organ uh, amplifiers. But um, typically you want to bypass that third channel and just uh, use the two primary channels, uh, one left and right for uh, stereo. Um, not a lot of these have a volume control built into them. Some of them do, but not all of them. So you may would want to add volume control to one of these. Um, if, you, if your source at your house doesn't have, um, like if you were wanting to feed just straight out of a CD player into one of these, you might need volume control. Most CD players don't have volume control, but but um, you know, let's say you're wanting to feed it with your iPhone or or um, iPod or something. Most of those have volume control, so you'd be okay. And last, some of these units have uh, maybe you want to put a light on it to know it's on or not. Um, or sometimes they'll have wires coming out of these that feed to lamps um, or lights that were in the front of the stereo console. Uh, sometimes you have to address those as well. All right, and here's the unit we're going to convert. Um, you know, I have a bunch of save searches on eBay that I use for various things, and uh, this happens to be one of my save searches. Um, I've, I've restored, I think this will be the third one I've ever done. Um, I did one for a friend of mine, and um, then I picked one up and did it for myself, and then I just happened to see this one pop up on eBay this past week, and, and I thought, ooh, I'm going to snag that. Uh, the guy here was asking $149.95 for it, um, but he had a or best offer, and I originally made a best offer of $75, and he declined it, and I went back and I offered $80, and I kind of said, hey, I bought a couple of these before in the $75 range. Not saying you won't, but I doubt you get $149 for it. Uh, $80 is the most I would go. Here's my best and final offer type thing. And the guy took it. Um, so with shipping, you know, I had basically a hundred dollars in it at that point. But it is a 1969 Sears Silverstone console stereo tube amplifier chassis. And as you can see here in the picture, um, it's got two. It's got um, speaker jacks on the front here. You can see Sears and Rose Roebuck. It's actually made by uh, Simpson in Canada. Um, but this thing has a uh, nice little um, set of four 6BQ5s, otherwise known as EL84 output tubes. You notice it's got two output transformers there in the back right hand corner turned 90 degrees from each other not to interfere with each other. Nice power supply uh, transformer on the left. Left front there you've got a nice uh, capacitor. Um, you know, a can capacitor on this thing. Then back behind the first tube there, another capacitor. And then in the front end, the two small tubes here, which, by the way, this one has all the original silver tone um, tubes in it, um, which are, I'd have to figure out who made those, probably uh, either Sylvania or CA. And they, um, and it's got two 12AX7s on the front end. And um, you can see a couple different pictures of it here. On the back there, you can see the kind of the umbilical cord jack I was talking about down there that would connect this to another uh, location. And then you can see here underneath this thing what we're going to be going into and uh, and actually restoring. So, um, you know, I was happy to get it for that price. I thought it was fair, uh, not a super great price. But if I can build somebody a nice um, stereo amplifier that really sounds good, tube-based, Maybe it's a hundred dollars in the uh, amplifier, but then I've got another seventy-five dollars in my parts or less in the conversion. Then uh, 
you know, $150, $175 nice little tube amplifier is not a bad route to go, you know. Um, probably could throw it on eBay completely restored and uh, triple my money off the thing, to be honest. Um, but I thought I would just build this one for the fun of making a video with the group here. And um, I just wanted to say, I'm going to go ahead and break this thing into two parts because I'm already up to about 15 minutes or more on this thing. So this will be part two, and I'm going to try to make the rest, I mean part one, I'll try to make the uh, part two today as well.